Hello and welcome to the first of the Unit 1 videos for Unit 1, the online world. It's one of your exam units. Um, these are revision videos, as it says on there. Um, hopefully you have a fair amount of the information that you've already done in lessons. This is just to give you a bit of a reminder. Um, you can look back on things before your exams. So you can hopefully keep all those things nice and fresh in your mind. Um, and when you get to the exam, you'll have no problems at all. It's a good idea to just kind of re-watch these every once in a while. Just having that reminder every every few weeks is a good thing to do. Um, and it will just sort of consolidate all the knowledge and put it in your long-term memory rather than your short-term. Um, so this one is part one um, about online services. Online services is probably the longest bit, so it could be a bit of a marathon this one. It could be a long one. I'll warn you now. But you can always pause it and get yourself a cup of tea. So that's nice. Let's crack on that. The things that we need to cover as far as online services are concerned. So these are the headings that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking about at how the internet is used for communication, um, how it's used to get some real-time information to you, how it's used in commerce and for paying for things and transferring money around, how the government uses the internet, how education uses the internet, um, different ways of um, entertainment you're using the internet, none of the dodgy ones. Um, download services, so things that you can use to download uh, media or programs, that kind of stuff. A little bit about online advertising and then just finishing off with some cloud-based stuff. Next slide. Communication. Okay, as fairly obvious, I'm sure you already know, it's all about being able to contact another person over the internet. So no matter how you do that, many different ways, uh, these are some of the ones that you need to know about. So obviously, email, you will know what email is. And we're going to a little bit more detail in email and different types of email on a later video. Uh, instant messaging, once again, you will know what it is. You've all used Messenger and that kind of stuff on your phones. So Obviously, the difference between email and instant messaging is it immediately comes up and you can have more of like a, a chat type thing between you. Um, social networking, once again, you know all about different social networking apps, so I'm not going to start telling you about them because you already understand. Uh, video conferencing, you may well be aware of that. Um, that's basically FaceTime on, on your iPhone. Just having a chat with somebody, but also having a video there as well. Uh, a lot of the time, you might have multiple people involved in that. With the FaceTime thing, it's normally just two people talking to each other. With video conferencing, you may well have several different screens um, all around, all being used to communicate with each other. Uh, then you got blogs, which you probably know about, but they are just um, written accounts um, that people put on to the internet. So maybe somebody's going on some posh adventure around the world, doing some travelling, and they might write a, a blog talking about what they've done every day and who they've seen and where they've been. Uh, vlogs are the same, but it's just a video log, so rather than doing it in text, it's done with a video. But we'll come to that in a second. Next one, so real-time information. So, unsurprisingly, this is stuff that updates in real time. A lot of the other things that you have um, on the internet, so like websites and things like that, they don't update on a live basis. But these are the ones that do update on a live basis. So obviously, the news. Um, if you look on your local news site, it should be giving you up-to-date news. If the site hasn't changed for the last six months, it's not news, is it? It's not new. Um, train times and um, flight times, they are, a lot of them have these kind of boards that come up. They give you live information about what's happening with your flight. So, in this example, a couple of them have been arrived, um, have arrived already. One to Mexico City is cancelled, that would probably be the one I was on. This one's arriving, these ones are landing now, this one's been delayed. All that kind of information just gives you up-to-date info so you can either meet the person who you're um, going to see on the flight or when you're in the waiting room waiting for a flight to go off, you know if it's been delayed, when you need to start going to the gate, those kind of things. So just a good way of keeping up-to-date, real-life information um, always there whenever you need it. Um, other examples of that, traffic reports, um, I've just bought myself a new sat-nav, it links up 
via Bluetooth to my phone, which is then connected to the internet, and it gets live traffic reports. So when I'm driving along, it'll suddenly pipe up and go, oh, on junction 17 of the A12, there's a big delay. It will take 10 minutes to get through and adds 10 minutes to your time. This is now the time you'll arrive at your destination. So it's giving me live updates of what's happening with the traffic. Um, and then also weather reports. Once again, no point in having an old update weather report for six days ago. You want it for now. So those update on a regular basis, normally every hour or so, sometimes even more, depending on what weather thing you're using. But those are all different types of real-time information, but the important thing is it's updating, it's live, it's pretty much there all the time. Next slide. Right, commerce. So, um, also sometimes called e-commerce. It's basically anything to do with money. Um, whether you're moving money around, paying for things, selling things, this is all e-commerce. Um, so your main things for that, internet banking, a lot of people use internet banking now, it's an awful lot easier than going into the bank itself. You get your app, you can see all your statements, you can transfer money around, you can pay people, all those sorts of things. So lots of different ways of banking over the internet. Also online auction sites like good old eBay, um, those will run, uh, everything's done online, it updates the bids as you go through, I'm sure you will use it. Um, and then any online shops as well. So anywhere we go onto a website, as soon as you click the checkout button and you start going to the payment section, that's where you're talking about um, e-commerce. So it's the payment part of the website that's the e-commerce bit or the commerce part. But quite a lot of websites use it, obviously, because people are making websites so they can either sell stuff or make money. So it's a very common thing to find on a website. Next one. Right, the government. Government use the internet for all sorts of different things. Um, lots of people do their tax returns online. It's an awful lot easier to fill in a form online and send it straight to the government than it is to do it on a bit of paper and post it and then hope that the post doesn't get lost, all those kind of things. So it's an awful lot easier to do tax returns online. Lots of individual companies and large companies will be doing that. Also, e-voting. Um, in a lot of the elections now, you can vote for things online, you don't actually have to go to a particular voting place, you can do that online. Uh, and also, if you want to apply for a grant, um, if maybe you're a sports club or something like that, and you want to apply to your local government for a grant for some new facilities or something like that, uh, those grant applications will be done online, rather than you having to fill out big lots of reams of paper and then sending that through the post. So it's all done online, just makes life a little bit quicker, a little bit easier. Um, and hopefully just speed up the response time a little bit. So that's the government. Oh yeah, and everything, anything that's an official government website ends in .gov, or it might be .gov.uk, but generally .gov. Education, so um, just using teaching and learning or sharing resources online. So anything that helps you, that you find online, is an example of this, so this video is an example of some um, online education. Uh, you may go on a specific learning or training course, as many of them around. Um, people like Udemy um, do them. Uh, what's the name of it? Uh, Lynda.com. Uh, some of the language sites as well. Lots of different places you can go um, to sign yourself up for a specific course. You'll get the module sent to you. You may then upload some coursework that you've done or upload some assignments that you've done. Um, and then also you've got things like, um, you often get to chat with a lecturer online or something like that if you need to ask a question. So some of them are quite com uh, complex like that. Some of them is just, you get a load of videos and you just follow the videos. And there's no necessarily um, certificate or qualification at the end. But some of them do come with qualifications, some of them don't. Uh, and you also have VLEs, or Virtual Learning Environments. It's just a posh way of saying somewhere where you keep all your stuff online. So Moodle is the one that we use. Um, all of our uh, resources that we decide we want to share with you, we stick on Moodle, and that can then be accessed from wherever. So lots of other virtual learning environments, but Moodle is the one that we use. That's education. Businesses. So once again, um, businesses use 
lots of different online services in different ways. One of the common ones is, and we've already mentioned it under communication, video conferencing. So, a quick example of video conference. Um, lots of businesses use that because they want to talk to other companies overseas or other offices in the country that they happen to own. It's an easy way of getting in touch with people that is generally free if you have an internet connection. Also, collaborative working is used quite a lot. Collaborative working is where you have more than one person working on the same thing. So by having some of the documents online, you can have people work on them from different locations. If you've just got something saved on a memory stick, you need to give that memory stick to whichever person you want to work on that. But if you've got it online, anybody that can log into that particular area and access that file will then be able to work on it and help you with it. Um, and then you have remote working. Lots of people work from home, so you work for a business, but you might work from home. So you go home, you do all the work on your computer, you send the, uh, all of your work to the office at the end of the day. Uh, also, you may well have things like remote desktops, which we have here. You can access your college account from your internet at home. Uh, you can just log in, it brings up a virtual desktop it looks just like, or fairly much, like your desktops you get in the rooms here. And then you can just work using the college system, using the college server, saving everything to where it would be if, just as if you were in college. So, different ways of using the internet in business. Entertainment. So you should be fairly similar with this. Um, using the internet as a source of entertainment, but this is just generally through... Um, streaming as opposed to downloading. We'll come to downloading in a second. Audio streaming, you've no doubt all heard of Spotify. So just something where you can log in, you pay for your time or however you organise it, and then the information is, or the music is played through your device. It's not stored on your device though. It plays it and that's it. That's the difference between streaming and downloading. If you stream something, it doesn't stay on your device. You don't have that and can come back to it later. You can stream it again, but you can't save it, put it into your device, and then when you're offline, carry on playing it. That's a slight difference with streaming. Uh, so Spotify is a good one of audio streaming. Video streaming, good old Netflix, they're very good for that. So once again, you have your Netflix account, you can look at any of your series or films that they've got on at the time. Um, and also online gaming. That's another way that you um, uh, entertain yourself over the internet. Obviously, if you're working or gaming online with other people, um, you link up over the internet to play Call of Duty or whatever it is game that you're going to play. And that's all part of entertainment online as well. So, the next one. Download services. So, this is when you're downloading some data, like some media or program and you're actually going to keep that data. So for audio, iTunes is a good example. So you buy your things on iTunes, you download them to your iPod, you've then got them, you don't need to be attached to the internet to have them. Um, Amazon Video is an example of the video one. Although they do a streaming service as well, you can also purchase things to buy it and you can then save them onto your devices and um, download those and have them for later on, so you don't need to be connected to watch them. Also, some of the stuff they have uh, for streaming, you can go on to download as well. Same with iPlayer. iPlayer will let you stream films uh, or TV programs they've had on, but a lot of the time they'll also let you download them, and you can keep them for a certain amount of time. Uh, and then for software, uh, things like Steam. Most of you will probably have heard of Steam. Great place if you want to have anything in the way of games. You can buy the codes for the games on Steam, you can then download the game onto your computer, play it for as long as you want, get rid of it if you want to just free some space up on your hard drive. If you then want to play the game again later on, you can re-download it again because you've already bought it from that um, particular company. So once again, being able to download software online, you're downloading it, it's going onto your computer, that's counted. And then the last one is for upgrades. Um, if you've bought games or you've bought um, programs, a lot of the time they'll bring out new upgrades depending on bugs they've found in the code or maybe loopholes that people have found that are security risks. 
if you're having an upgrade happening, that particular service is a download service. So it's downloading the upgrade onto your computer. It's then installing that upgrade and updating your game. A couple more. So, online advertising, all over the place. Can't get away from it. It'd be nice if you could, but you can't get away from it. You'll all have seen YouTube videos. You have your five seconds of ad before you can skip it. Sometimes you can't even skip it, which is always annoying. Um, but that's what's paying for those people to, that's what gets YouTube their money. If they're not getting any money for the videos themselves, they get money from the advertising. Also, website banners, they always pop up all over the place, down the side at the top, pop-ups, those kind of things. Lots of different ways to kind of get your attention, get, trying to get you to buy things. And a lot of them can be targeted. So for instance, if you've just Googled something um, on Amazon, you may then go to Facebook and then find, lo and behold, it's advertising that thing that you just Googled on Facebook. It does happen a lot of the time. I have heard stories about uh, politicians, slightly dodgy stories, about a politician that phoned up a company saying that he was quite upset by all of the dodgy pornographic links that were on their website when he went onto it, and he was told that it was based on his search history. So, a little bit embarrassing. Anyway, that's online advertising. Let's move on. Last one. So, cloud services. This is where you store either data or use some programs that are all based online. So, the cloud is basically online. It's not up in the air like a normal cloud. It will be in lots of different places on servers that are spread around the world. But the important thing is, it's not on your computer. It's on someone else's computer, on a server, somewhere else, or you're normally in multiple different places. So things you can use them for, um, storage and file sharing. So Dropbox is a good one for that. That's quite a popular one. You can upload your information to Dropbox. You can then get it from any other device that you've got the Dropbox app on. You can also share a Dropbox folder with other people so they can also get to your files if they need to. You can also use the cloud for backup iCloud or your Apple devices will automatically back up your important information to the cloud. It will save it on the internet. It takes up quite a lot of um, your bandwidth. So if your iPad is one that works on a mobile network, good idea not to have this activated unless you're at home on your Wi-Fi, because otherwise it may cost you an arm and a leg. Um, and then you've got things like online applications like Google Docs. So quite a lot of people use Google Docs. You go into the Google thing and it's got things like word processors and those kind of things all built in. You don't need to have it on your actual computer. It's all part of online and the Google Chromebooks, which are little laptops but very, very cheap. The reason they're cheap is because they don't really have much of a hard drive and they use online applications to do all of their work. The downside of that is that if you don't have an internet connection, you can't use any of your programs. And that is about it for online services. So a bit of a long one but hopefully it was useful and we'll see you in the next video.